Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another round of sound. This is the number one Cochrane Sports Showdown. I'm Bob Pompiani. A lot to get into. The Penguins, after two losses in Philly, come home and finally get a win. We'll talk about what's gone on with Evgeny Malkin and Chris Letang, among other things. We'll also get in today's wild game between the Chiefs and the Cleveland Browns. But the number one topic tonight on the number one Cochrane Sports Showdown will be the Steelers offseason, which has begun. And man, what a week it's been. Here's to talk about it is your panel. We have Colin Dunlap from the Fan Morning Show, bottom right. Across from him is Josh Joey, outstanding Penguin beat writer with The Athletic. And above Colin is <laughs> Jeff Athorn, 93.7 The Fan, beat reporter for the Steelers and the Pitt Panthers. And Jeff, I want to start with you on this one. O Canada will be the headline. It hasn't happened officially yet. The Steelers have not made this announcement, but NFL Network's reporting that he will be the successor to Randy Feekner, who was fired. I don't understand why the Steelers couldn't do a more extensive search here for such a key position. It's another internal hire. If it happens, do you like it? Uh, yeah, that's a great question. I, I would have liked to have seen them kick the tires on some big names that were out there, and, and who knows what their interest was in the Steelers, but at least – go out and, and see if a Doug Peterson or somebody would be interested in coming and help rebuild this offense and rebuild in this organization. Uh, Matt Canada had that one very successful year with the Pitt Panthers, and all Pitt fans can look back at that year and say, wow, if he can do that to the Steelers offense. But my problem is this. He's never been coordinator at the professional level before. I think they're rolling the dice, but I think they were pushed a little bit because of the interest Miami had. I don't, I don't love it. I don't hate it. It's, it, it beats an old retread, I think. You know, I didn't want that to happen. Um, you know, it's going to be interesting to see what happens with Ben from here because I think the issue now is what happens with Ben Roethlisberger and his ability to work with him if he wants to work with him at all. I would have liked to have seen if they could get Mike Kafka, which I don't think that's going to happen. As soon as Biennemi leaves, he'll probably stay in Kansas City. Maybe McDaniel from the 49ers. And this isn't a get him because he's from Pittsburgh kind of thing. But the way Aaron Rodgers speaks about Luke Getze and what Luke Getze has done for that pass game in Green Bay, and we just saw it again last night, a play for Luke Getze may have worked. I, I, don't, I don't hate the Matt Canada situation. I don't love it. Uh, again, I think it's better than Jim Caldwell or a retread or something like that. I like young. I like innovative. And so Matt Canada fits that more than uh, kind of the retread situation. Yeah, look, hey, we all know Matt Canada's a bright guy. I'm curious about just how much input he had on this offense this season. I don't know. And I don't know that many people really do know. It all goes back to Ben Roethlisberger, though. Uh, nobody really knows what Ben's going to do if he's going to play next season. If he isn't, I, my suspicion is he wants to play one more year. I don't think he would want them bringing in an offensive coordinator uh, who he wasn't familiar with, who had completely revamped the offense. And I know people are going to say, who cares what Ben thinks? Well, Mike Tomlin cares what Ben thinks, and the Steelers care what Ben thinks. So for next season, he certainly still has some power, assuming he's going to be their quarterback. I, I don't hate the decision necessarily, but I just don't know how much influence he had this season. Well, and if Canada did have a lot of influence this season, then I am concerned because there wasn't a lot of innovation on this offense. Wouldn't you think that Ben Roethlisberger well, Bob, had the I biggest said, impact here? We, it, it seems like Ben's hands are all over everything going on. And if yes. Ben comes back, will they be able to work together? Will Canada be able to implement the things he wants? And will Ben be cool with some of the things that he brings to the table? It doesn't matter. Ben wasn't good enough this year uh, in the last five games of the season or in through the playoffs to, to need to worry about that. I said this all along when they brought Matt Canada here. Matt Canada isn't a side dish. He's not something that you sprinkle in. He's not an accompaniment. If you bring in Matt Canada, you need to be fully on board. It, you, it needs to be a lifestyle. It needs to be a way of living. It needs to be a philosophical change. They tried to, with Coach Randy's philosophies and Ben's philosophies, sprinkle in a little Matt Canada here, a jet sweep there, this play here, there. That's not the way a Matt Canada offense can work. You have to fully immerse yourself in it. The question then becomes, do you have the personnel to fully immerse yourself in it? I think with what they have in Deontay Johnson with Claypool, you've got to get Ben under center a little bit if you really want it to work. But that's what it takes for a Matt Canada offense to work. It's not just an accompaniment, a little dash of salt and pepper here and there. You got to live it. You got to live it fully. It also takes a run game that at least has right. the appearance that it can get done. We've seen it when it happened in Green Bay. Aaron Jones yesterday running all over, opening up play action. You know, Cleveland can do it. Kansas City, when it needed today, did it. Josh, Yoey, uh, let me ask you this. To me, obviously, they have a lot of needs. But to me, the run game is right up there at the top of the list. 
whether that's a running back or an offensive lineman to help in that game, how big of his need or what is the biggest need for you? Well, well, there's no question. Watch the other playoff games, guys. I know Buffalo refuses to run the ball, but every other team I see, um, even teams with great quarterbacks, look at Green Bay. They run the ball really well. Kansas City can run the ball when they need to, and we've seen that time and time again. I hope the Steelers realize now that it's an important thing, and to me it all goes back to the offensive line. The running backs aren't great, but a great offensive line can – can really work even if you have mediocre running backs. And the Steelers' offensive line has taken so many steps back, especially in the department of run blocking. Here's the problem I see for the Steelers. You don't just fix that in one offseason. You don't just fix that in one draft. It takes offensive linemen who were drafted a couple of years to really become great players. That's the problem when you look at, you know, the Ben Roethlisberger timeline and in terms of revamping this offense. It doesn't really mesh to me. Well, for me, the run game is it. Go ahead, Go ahead, Jeff. Go ahead. I knew this was going to happen. Colin, you yeah, go. That, for me, it, it is a situation. Running the football is a situation, and it's always going to be a, big, a decent sized situation. I don't think it's as big as a lot of other people do. I think the inability, you watched the Mahomes game today before he got hurt, the inability for Ben to complete anything beyond 16, 18 yards, that never freed up what the Steelers really wanted to do. For me, the inability to throw the deep ball was uh, it, it falls much bigger than the inability to run the football this year. Ben didn't scare anyone deep. That's a big problem. I think Derek Watt is probably the happiest guy because George Aston went from no carries in 2015 to 10 <laughs> touchdowns in 2016 at fullback. So maybe he'll get, finally get something out of Derek Watt. I agree with Josh. Big problem is the offensive line. It's getting old. They've been trying to hold on to those guys and hope that they could keep up a high level, but it drops uh, from the level that you're used to. I'm not saying that, that Pouncey and DeCastro can't play the game anymore, but they don't play at the same level they used to, and that is an issue for this Steelers team. They, they're trying to work in new linemen, but you can't do it all in one draft. You, you're going to have to Band-Aid, and I think that's when you start looking at salary cap and what you look at for next year. I mean, I think those issues are going to – persist no matter who you bring in an offensive coordinator because you have issues on that line. I got one minute. So quickly, we're going to go around the horn. Start Josh first, then Colin, then Jeff. This is called keep or move on. You make your choice. I'll give you a player. You give me an answer. Josh, James Conner, keep or move on? Move on. You can get someone just as good for cheaper. Colin? Move on. I agree. Move on. All the things Josh said. Move on. And I think it's best for James Conner to go somewhere else and get a fresh start. Josh, Juju Smith-Schuster. Move on. He's a good player, but there's no way they can afford him with their current salary situation. I just don't see it happening. Keep. If Ben's willing to do some things with his contract, if Ben stays, keep. I would love to keep him. I love what he is on the field, but you're not, you can't afford him. Mike Hilton, Josh. Who? It's a tough one to lose, but I think you move on. Somebody's going to give him a ton of money. I just look at their salary situation. I don't see how you keep him, even though I know he's going to hurt their defense if he goes. I keep him because I cut the Castro, so I keep my kill. No. I, I love his splash plays, but he, he has a, he struggles covering, so I would let him go. One more name, and they have a lot of guys in the high rent district. Joe Hayden's one of them. Is he back or not, Josh? I would keep him. I know he makes a lot of money. I still think he's a really good player. I'm not so sure I would keep Steven Nelson across the field, but I would keep him for sure. I agree. I would try to keep him. Uh, absolutely. I would release Joe Hayden and sign Cam Sutton to a multi-year contract. Oh, interesting stuff. All right, that's good stuff. We have more football on the way. We got some Penguin stuff a little bit later after they won today against Washington. But next up, Kansas City. Some great calls, some big decisions in that game. We'll break it all down next right here on the number one Cochrane Sports Showdown.